Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 through verse 16. I might skip a couple verses here. And the word of the Lord says in the King James Version Bible, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned. In the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which he hath foundation, which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Verse 13, if you would. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. But having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth, for they, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, and heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. A city. Hallelujah. And I thought maybe I would like to speak tonight on the title, Stepping Out into the Promises of God. Stepping out into the promises of God. Can we all pray and ask the Lord to send a special anointing tonight? How about it? Can we all just pray? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank you, Father, for this day. I thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you've created for us, your children, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this beautiful creation, Lord, that you've shared with us. I thank you, Lord, for your precious word, your truth that we can read here in your house here tonight. And I thank you, my Father, for your presence, for your Son that has saved my heart and saved my soul from hell. And I pray, Father, would you send a special anointing tonight upon your servant and upon your children here tonight. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to the truth of your wonderful, precious word. And we'll not forget to praise you. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. And the church said, thank you for standing for the word of the Lord. You may be seated. God is so good. I'm speaking tonight on the title, Stepping Out into the Promises of God. Stepping Out into the Promises of God. You know, two weeks ago, I spoke on Moses, for those that weren't here, how God told Moses to go tell his people. He told Moses to tell him to go. That's right, two people remembers. Hallelujah. God is good. To go forward. God said to tell my people to go forward. They were standing there at the Red Sea and they, they couldn't go. They was right there in front of the roadblock. And they said, God told them, said, go forward. Tell them to go forward. Not to go back. Not to turn around, but to go forward. Go forward. I'm going to tell you, when God tells you to go forward, you can go forward. You can rest assured your Red Sea is going to part. Hallelujah. You got to get through your roadblocks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go forward in the promises of God. You know, just as God said to Moses, go forward. He's telling Abraham here. Faithful Abraham, I might say. He calls Abraham and he, he calls Abraham out. And told him to get out. Get out of that place. Where you're at Abraham. And I'll show you where to go. Go forward Abraham. Get out of there. Hallelujah. You going forward tonight? I am. I'm going forward in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God I am. Hallelujah. 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 Go forward Moses. Go forward Abraham. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm going forward. You know, I might not know the roads that are, that, 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 that are waiting on me, ahead of me. I might not know what roads I got to go down, Brother Terry, Brother Jason. I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't. Hallelujah, I don't. But I have determined 
in my heart and in my life to stand on the promises of God and go forward in Jesus tonight. In Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you, the old devil, he'll throw some roadblocks in front of you. He'll put them in front of your family. He'll put them in front of your marriage. He'll do it. But I'm determined, Brother Jerry Bragg, to go forward in the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I have been given my life here on this earth through my mama and daddy was my first birth. I didn't come from them. I come from God. But I come through my parents, just like you did. Just like you did. That was my first birth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And my second birth that I had in my Lord, my new birth in the Spirit of God. I tell you, they can have their old dead religion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They can have their remote religion all they want to. Hallelujah. But I am alive in Christ tonight. Are you? We got two alive people. Three. Hey, I'm alive in Christ, Brother Jerry. Hallelujah. I see my little grandbabies. I'm sitting, you know, I'm getting older now. I sit in that living room, that family room, and here comes a ran baby this way. Then here comes another one this way. And then here they go this way. One will jump over the table. One will jump on the couch. They are alive. They are alive. People that are alive, they move, don't they? And I'm sitting there thinking, man, I wish I had that much life in me, Sister Shirley. Watching them little babies hopping around and jumping around. You know, when I was when my kids were young, I'm like, hey boys, don't put your feet on the coffee table. This ain't the pool hall. Now as a grandparent, I'm like, their dad gets on them, get your feet off the coffee table. I'm like, oh dad, they can put their feet on the coffee table. <laughs> you all do that. I tell you, it makes me normal then. If you all do it, I know it's okay to do that. I tell you. You know, they know granddaddy's easy as dirt. I'm telling you, I know I am. They know it too. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But I'm going to live forever in the Lord. Are you? Can we say, I'm going to live forever. Hallelujah, I tell you. You better, not, you better not amen me too much. I'm getting a little worked up up here. I'm going to live forever in the Lord. I've got an eternal life waiting on me. The devil ain't going to get me to sell, to sell out. No, indeedy, I'm going on with Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm headed for my eternal life in God where there ain't no more doctors. There ain't no more cancer. There ain't no more crying. Ain't no more crying babies and crying mamas. There ain't no, there ain't no sickness. There ain't no funerals. There ain't no parting. You know, no parting from your loved ones. There's no more hurt, no more loneliness. No, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I, I just tell, you know, I just tell something on me here tonight. You know, as a pastor, there's one thing I, I, I really don't like to do, just to fess up here, just to fess up. One thing, you know, I don't preach, fun uh, I don't preach weddings. Sorry, Monica, I didn't mean to call your wedding a funeral. <laughs> you know, they say puppy love leads to a dog's life. But anyways, he's a good boy. But, you know, it's one thing I don't like doing is preaching funerals. I never did. I, I mean, I have, you know, and I do it, but I do it because I, I love people and I want to, if they ask me to do it, I'll do it. But I really, it's something I don't enjoy, Brother Danny. I don't, I don't like preaching funerals. I don't. Jesus said, let the dead bury. It's, I think the reason I don't like preaching them is I know that the person in the casket ain't, ain't there. You know, I, I really don't think they're there. I'm talking about the saved ones. I know they're up there, and they're listening. And I want to make sure I do it right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that a good way to look at it? But anyways, we ain't going to be no funerals up there. Ain't no more preaching, no more funerals. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I'm going to be living in a holy city that I have never seen before, and I can only imagine it in my mind. You know, and I'm going to tell you something. I have determined it in my heart to serve God. Amen. Now, I want to say this right. I love my precious wife. I do. I love her with all my heart. I do. Well, maybe not all my heart, but I love her. 
I love the Lord with all my heart, if I know my heart. I know. Well, I got to watch. I ain't going to get no fried bologna tonight. You know, for those that don't know what fried bologna is, that's what, that's what us church people eat after church on Sunday nights if it's a good service. Fried bologna. Most people, they go out to the, was it, the Longhorns or whatever. Well, in my house, that's, that's steak. That's poor boy steak there, fried bologna. But anyways, you know, but my wife isn't going to keep me from serving God. She wouldn't want to keep me from serving the Lord. She's not. There ain't nothing going to keep me from serving God. My wife's not going to keep me from serving God. You know, my children aren't going to keep me from serving God and making heaven. You know, and as much as I love my little Ram babies, I call them Ram babies. I love them. I tell you, I do. I, I've spoiled them. They're spoiled rotten. Well, not rotten, but they're spoiled. I love them. I love my little Ram babies. But, you know, my relationship with God and serving God, they're not going to keep me from serving God. They're not going to keep me from doing something that's wrong. I mean, keep me, make me do something wrong and lose out my salvation. They're not. They wouldn't want to. My wife would never do nothing that would keep me from serving the Lord. God's called me out of a life of sin. I'm telling you, I have purposed it in my heart, in my soul, to follow after Jesus and to make it through the gate. Make it through the gate. I've received this promise of God that says, hey, if you'll just start out for me, hallelujah, I'll be with you to the end of the world. I'll even be with you to the end of the world. I'm speaking tonight on the title, Stepping Out into the Promises of God. Faithful Abraham here in these scriptures lived his life. When you read this Bible and you read back, if you go to like this 12th chapter of uh, Genesis, this 12th chapter of Genesis, talking about how the Lord called out Abraham. If you look at his life from when he called Abraham out of his country through his lifetime, he lived his whole life in the promises of God, the promises of God. And this story says that one day that Abraham, God calls out faithful Abraham, Genesis 12 and 1. And he, the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of the country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. And I, now this is God speaking, and I will, show, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I'll make your name great, and you shall be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curse you. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. So what did Abraham do? It says here in verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75. He was, she was 75 years old. When he departed out of Haran, 75 year old, 75 years old, starting out in a life of promises and living his life in a promise of God. Abraham is obedient to the Lord, to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham was obedient. And from that day forward, Abraham lived his life having a great promise of God. Hallelujah. You know, this whole Bible's full of promises, and I'm going to tell you, you could speak and preach for years on the promises of God. I could speak for years just, and I know you don't want me to, but on just the promises of God. And God calls out Abraham. He calls him out. He says, Abraham, leave where you're at right now, Abraham. Leave where you're at right now, where you are living, Abraham. The way that you're living, God is telling Abraham to leave the way that he is living right now. To get away from your family. To get away from the relatives. Leave your father's house and start for a country, Abraham, that I will show you. Then he goes on to tell Abraham, he says, Abraham, if you'll do this, if you'll do this, Abraham, I will. I will make a great nation of you. I will bless you, Abraham. 
I'll make you great. I'll make your name great. And I'll even, I will make you a blessing to others. I will bless you. And I will curse them who curse you. I'll bless them who bless you. And through you, Abraham, all families on earth will be blessed. You know, God has called us out too. You might not know it. He called us out of a life of sin one day, those of us that are saved. He did. He has. He who have been called out by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I tell you, we better thank God that God dealt with our heart one day. And he said, hey, go down to that church. Go down to listen to the preacher man. Go down to listen to the word of God. I've got a work for you to do. I'm calling you out of your situation. I'm calling you out of your place where you're living right now. Hallelujah. Well, I'm calling you out. You know, and we answered that call. You know, we need to answer the call of God that he's placed on our lives. We need to have that separation. You know, there's a lot of speculation here throughout the years of, of a, about Abraham and what he was doing at the time when, Jesus, when God called him out from where he was living. I've heard different ideas that said Abraham was doing this or Abraham was working here or whatever. You know, but the Bible doesn't really say the Bible doesn't say what Abraham was doing when he called him out. It doesn't. It doesn't. So we can understand by that that it wasn't important to God to even have written about what Abraham was doing. It wasn't important. It didn't matter what Abraham was doing. It was only important to God about what Abraham was going to do from that time of separation forward. Forward. It was important to God what Abraham would do going forward. The Bible doesn't say what was going on back. Same holds true for us, my friends, tonight. God isn't a God of past failures. He isn't our God of past failures. God doesn't get stuck in the past. He is the God of our new beginnings. A new beginning. Hallelujah. New start, Abraham. A new start, Abraham. A new start, my brother, tonight. A new start, my sister, tonight. Same holds true for us, friend. You, you know, sometimes we're the ones that get stuck in the mud and the dirt of the past. We get stuck on the what ifs or whatever was done way back when and we get a looking back and we get all depressed and we're the ones that, that find ourselves not going forward. You know, it's hard to go forward when you're looking back, isn't it? Amen. You, that's a good way to fall down. That's a good way to hit the car in front of you. You drive in that rear view mirror, you're going to hit somebody at the red light. I'm going to tell you that right now. You got to look forward, that big old windshield to look forward. That rear view mirror is just to take a peek every once in a while. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But Abraham was obedient to the call of God. He left his old way of life. He left it all for the promise of God. He left his country. He left his father's house. He left the family inheritance. He left his old friends and his relatives. And he took God at his promise. You know, the Bible doesn't say that his relatives and his family were evil people. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that all of that was bad or whatever. He had a work for Abraham to do. 
He had something for Abraham. He calls Abraham out to go forward, to go forward. Hallelujah. He took God at his promise. For God said that he would make him a great nation out of him. He said that he will bless Abraham. That he will make a great nation out of him. That he will make Abraham's na name great. That he will do it. If you notice, God didn't do it right then. He didn't do it right then. No, he didn't. Because Abraham didn't obey. He didn't leave yet. He hadn't left. Abraham hadn't separated himself according to God's word. His word. You know, that's some good, we can glean some good information from that, my brother. Hallelujah. We can glean from that. You know, maybe the reason that God isn't, deal, isn't blessing us, maybe the reason God isn't helping us is maybe we haven't left all of that stuff. Maybe we haven't left those kind of people. Maybe we haven't left that kind of nightlife or whatever. We didn't separate ourselves from that the old paths, the old life. Maybe that's the reason God isn't moving in our life here tonight. You know, there's a separation that God wanted Abraham to do. And there's a separation that God wants us to do. When God calls us to him, we are to take up our cross and follow him. Abraham didn't receive anything until he started out. He didn't receive anything till he started out. There is a thinking that all you got to do is to buckle your seatbelt, sit in the house of God and just ride it out. But God didn't do nothing. He didn't bless Abraham until Abraham obeyed until he was obedient. That is where so many souls lose out in obtaining their promises of God. They never leave their past. They never, they never depart. They never separate. They will never experience the fullness of the Spirit-filled life in Jesus Christ, all because they don't want to turn from their past way of life. They will never experience a daily walk in Christ going forward if they don't get up and leave that old man. They never will wake up into a brand new day in Jesus. Hallelujah. Because they will never depart or separate themselves from the old things. The old things. You know, Brother Jerry said it right tonight. God loves you. He loves us. He does. He does. And he's given us all a way of salvation. He has. He's given us a way of salvation. He puts people in our lives to show us that we need to be saved. He puts people, he puts a preacher in front of you here tonight that says, hey, you need to be saved. You need to start out. You need, you need to receive salvation. And if you're not careful, my brother, if you're not careful, friend, if you're not careful tonight, we could miss the greatest opportunity in our life. He deals with us, God does. The Spirit of God, He breaks through that old stony heart, that old sinful heart and mind, and He gives us a way out, a way out. It's up to us to be obedient to the will of God, to the calling of God for salvation, for deliverance, for eternal life. You know, Jesus already died on the cross, my friend, tonight. He's already hung on the cross he has. He died on the cross. He's not coming back to hang on the cross again. He's not. Jesus himself said when he was hanging on the cross, right before he gave up his life, what did he cry out? It is finished. It is 
finished. It's finished. The Holy Spirit of God already descended on the day of Pentecost. And it is promised to every believer who will receive him. A gift from God for the believer. Salvation is available to everyone. To everyone. Salvation is available to everyone. Everyone who will believe and will receive. Receive. The Spirit of God is available to everyone that is saved. Who will believe and receive. You know, verse 4 here of Genesis, it says that Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. I'm going to tell you tonight, if you really want to be saved and you really want salvation, hallelujah, you got to do like Abraham did. You've got to turn from your old way of life and you've got to walk down, hallelujah, to the Lord, to an altar of prayer, and leave your old way of life. Hallelujah. You got to get your eyes on the Lord, upon Jesus, and receive the promises of God. Abraham received the promises of God after, after he was separated, after he departed, after he stepped out, How about us tonight? How about us? How about us? What's keeping us from receiving, hallelujah, the promises of God? Who is keeping you from the promises of God, I might ask? Who is keeping you from the promises of God in your life? You know, We cannot give the promises of God to ourselves, can we? No, it comes from God. We can't do that. We can't. God does it. You know, some people will never leave their old way of life because they don't feel that they're worthy enough to receive from God. They feel as if They've done something so terrible that they can't be saved. They feel that in their mind that if they come to God, they won't be able to live the life in Jesus Christ. They feel that way. They do. They feel they're not worthy. Well, I got news for you. We aren't worthy enough. We aren't worthy. I'm not worthy enough to receive, worthy to receive. But God does it. He does it. Hallelujah. You know, we're still in our old flesh, aren't we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God's amazing grace. Oh, how sweet the sound. Hallelujah is reaching out for you tonight. And you, and you, and you tonight. The amazing grace of God reaching out for you just like he did for me one day. And I promise you tonight, my brother, my sister, my friend tonight, God's grace is is sufficient it it works this is a way that works some people will never journey with God because of someone else they're listening to a voice that is not right sister Rachel sister Monica I'm I'm almost done you want to get Rachel tell her to come on hey but some people will never journey any further in God because of someone else holding them back. They're listening to a voice that is not right. They're listening to somebody say something that is not right. Can I ask a question tonight? Have you ever seen a newborn baby? Now, I think we all have, haven't we? Amen. Have you? You know, a newborn baby, Sister Shirley, Sil, Wendy, I'm going to pick on my family here tonight, Brother Richard. You know, a newborn baby, it never starts breathing. And I know we have a nurse here today, and she can correct me here. 
but just being a, a father and a husband here. You know, it never starts breathing until it's actually born. Now, that's pretty basic, isn't it? It doesn't start breathing. It has to leave the womb of its mother. Until it breaks forth in birth, that baby is not going to breathe. It will never cry until it's born. There is absolutely really nothing you can do for that child in that womb until really it is born. Till it's born. If that child hasn't been born yet, there ain't much you can do until it's born. You know, it doesn't matter how much that you think in your own mind. Now, I'm not a woman. I know that for sure. CNN doesn't have to tell me that or whoever. It doesn't matter how much we think in our own mind that a baby should stay in the womb. There is absolutely no way that that baby can get help until it's delivered, until it's actually born. You can't hold it back from being born, Sister Wendy. Am I preaching to the choir, ladies? There's no holding it back, Sister Rachel. There's no holding it back. You can try, but it ain't going to work. There are doctors, they just hold me out, I'm almost finished, that have, that have taken tests on some pregnant mothers who have made the determination that a child, that the child that is in that particular mother's womb is messed up. It's sick, that there's something wrong with it. And that that child that will try to be born will not make a a normal delivery or won't have normal functions after its, its birth because of what that doctor sees on that test or what he sees on the the blood test or the ultrasound or whatever he, uh, whatever he looks at, by what he understands, Sister Shirley, Sister Wendy, Sister Rachel, Sister Monica, Brother, Brother Jerry, by what he understands, what he is seeing and what he is believing before it's born, where it's right now, Some of those same doctors, Sister Burke, Brother Burke, will even push on the mother that the child should not be born. That they should not allow this sick child or this sick baby that's in this womb. And they'll go as far as to tell that mama that you need to terminate the pregnancy. They say not to allow this baby to be born. Have you heard stories like that? By what the doctor thinks. By what some man thinks. By what some woman thinks. I'm talking about a professional. They'll say, hey, this baby don't need to be born. You need to terminate it. And if the mama does that, That child will never have an opportunity in life on this earth when that happens. Unfortunately, there are mothers who have listened to that voice, to that advice of that professional or that so-called professional that says that there, that there are certain, they're sure. And the mother has listened to this so-called professional and not allowed their little baby to be born and try life. 
There, but there are some mothers, some godly mothers, I might say, that have listened to those same kind of reports about their child, about their baby, the report that the doctor has given them. They heard what the doctor said for them to do, that your baby is sick. But they, in prayer, in the prayer of faith, they decided to put their new little baby in mama's womb, mama's little baby that she's carrying. They decided to put that new little baby in the hands of God and allow their baby to be born, to give their child an opportunity a chance, a try, Sister Shirley, to try it, to try life, and to see, to give it life. There's a hope in Mama's mind. There's a hope down deep in Mama. Give the baby a chance. Give it a, let it have a life. Let its little heart beat. Let it breathe. For the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But at least it'll be in God's hands. At least it'll be in God's hands. And you know, some of those babies, those same babies that had been given absolutely no hope, Sister Wendy, Sister Shirley, Brother Silas, Brother Richard, absolutely no hope by the doctors. You know, they're born just fine. And they go on their lives to their lives on earth. They get life. They get life. But some of those same babies are born and they do have difficulties throughout their little life on earth. No telling how, how long. They do have difficulties. But they are born. They've been given life. They have breathed. Their little hearts have beaten. They're loved by their mama, their mother. They're cared for by a loving mother and a loving heavenly father. They receive an opportunity of life. Life. Brothers and sisters tonight, the baby is either born or it's not born. Brother Jerry, it's either born or it's not born. It's there is no half life. There is no half life. There is no half birth. There is, there is no almost born. My brothers, my friend tonight, my sisters, the same holds true of our second birth in God, in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. We are either born again or we're not born again. We're either born again or we're not born again. We are not half born again. We're not almost born again. We're not, we're either born again or we're not. We're either saved or we're not. When a person is living in sin, 
Some people will look at that person and say, there is no hope. Have you ever heard anybody say that? They'll say, oh, there ain't no hope for them. Give it up. No, you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. There's no way that that person could ever live a godly life in Jesus Christ. Look at what he watches. Look at what he does. Look at what she does. Look where she goes. There's no way they could do that. Look how she dresses. Ah, oh, there's no way. No, they need to wait. They need to wait. I live with them. I see them when they get mad. I hear them talk on the phone. I see them. I see what they're doing every day. They're spiritually sick. They can't get saved. They can't walk for Jesus. You know, them people really think and they believe that there is no way a certain person, so-and-so, could ever be saved in the condition that they're in right now. That they will never make a, a heaven in a new birth. There's no way they could handle a new birth. They would never be able to walk a Christian life in the condition that they are in right now. Some people say that about themselves. You know who that sounds like to me that would say those kind of things? Sound like the devil to me. Sound like the devil would say that to you. Oh, you can't get saved. You can't live this life. Sounds like something the devil would say, doesn't it? You know how I know that sounds like something the devil would say? That's what he said to me before I got saved. I was a sergeant in the Marines. He said, you can't live this life and be in the Marine Corps. You can't do that. You can't live a life for Christ in the Marine Corps. Look at what you're doing. Look at what you're saying. Look how you're talking. Look at your friends. There's no way you can be saved. Nah, you better not try it. Yeah, no, you better not try it. If I would have asked my buddies, they would have told me right to my face. Ain't no way you can live it, Chapman. There's no way. No way. Sound like the devil to me. Only the devil would keep somebody from being saved. That's probably what the devil told you too. That's probably what the devil told all of us before we got saved that we couldn't live this life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The devil says there's no hope for your husband. The devil says there's no hope for your sister. The devil says there's no hope for your grandchildren. There's no hope for your spouse, for your wife, for your neighbor. There's no hope for the president. There's no hope it's what he says. That's his department to take every bit of hope out of you. And I'm going to tell you, he'll use somebody that you will have all the confidence in the world of. And he'll use them. The devil specializes in using anybody he can. Any voice that will speak, that will spew his lies, he'll use them. I'm telling you, he will. He'll use them. He'll use them. But thank God you tried anyways, brother. That's the reason you're here tonight. Thank God I tried it. I said, I don't care what the devil says. I'm going to walk up to the altar and I'm going to pray and I'm going to get down on my knees. And you know what? I'm going to give God a try. I'm going to go on for Jesus. Hallelujah. Just as God called out Abraham. You know what? I'm going to separate myself from my old way of life. And I'm going to step out in faith. Hallelujah. I feel the power of the Lord all over me. I'm telling you, God is good. Hallelujah. We can step out like Abraham. We can go forward like Moses and the children of God. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. I tried it and it worked. You tried it and you're here tonight, Brother Burke. You're here tonight, Brother Atkins, Brother Golf, Brother Danny, Brother Terry, Brother Jason. And the list goes on. Hallelujah, Brother Summers, Brother Bobby, all of you. You know, you tried it. What if you had to listen to the devil and said, Oh, yeah, I was drinking those things. I was doing those things. Uh, uh, and you never went up and you never tried Jesus. Where would you be tonight? Would you be strung out on drugs? Would you be bound to the alcohol? 
Would you be bound? Would you be sitting there waiting for that person to tell you, okay, it's all right for you to go up now? What would you have done? Thank God we tried it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just as Jesus was born on this earth as a little baby, we just went through that season in a little town of Bethlehem. He was born as a little baby. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We all come to the Lord as a little child. A little child. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We come to the Lord as a little child. Jesus said it in Matthew. He said, unless you come to him and as a little child, you will no, no way inherit the kingdom of God. We all come to the Lord as a little child. Hallelujah. We are born again as a little baby in the Lord. He gives us a new birth and no one's going to hold us back ever. Jesus told his disciples to allow, to suffer the little children, to allow, Sister Wendy, to allow, Sister Shirley, to allow Brother Silas, Brother Richard, Brother Jerry, Brother Terry, to allow the children to come unto him, to allow them to come unto him, to allow to suffer the little children to come unto him, for that is the kingdom of God. God, we start out as a baby in the Lord. We start breathing when we come to the Lord in Him, when we get saved, we don't know how to walk when you're a baby. Did anybody start walking the minute they were born? No. When you get saved, you don't know how to walk for the Lord. You don't know how to. You don't know how to talk. Jesus said it. We don't know. We cry about everything. My little grandbabies, they cry about everything as a little baby. When they're first born, yeah, the little baby is going to have special care. We're going to have to treat it tenderly. We're going to have to hold it specially. We're going to have to hold him specially, Brother Jerry. We're going to have to hold that child. We're going to have to help him. He's got to grow. She's got to grow. She's got to grow in the Lord. And yes, we're going to fall down. We're going to fall down every now and then. And we will cry. And we will pout. It's the nature. You know, I said, tell all my little girl here. I know I'm almost done. Just bear with me. Tell all my little girl here. Now, I had three boys before I had my precious little girl, this little girl here at the piano. I had three boys. My boys never stuck their lip out and pouted, ever. If they did, I'd wear their, t their tails out, Brother Ken, if I ever seen them do it. My wife doesn't pout. She gets even. Amen. I heard that. Well, man, I tell you, that's an amen there. Somebody's thinking, hey, he's preaching now. But uh, <clears throat> she doesn't pout. Nobody pouts, you know. She, nobody pouts in my family. And then when she was a little girl, I'll never forget, I told her something, and she crossed her arms, and she stuck her lip out, and she pouted. I looked at her, and I'm like, where did she learn that? It was built in. It was built in, sister. It was like it was just in there waiting, and she pouted. It was this, that was the nature. That was her nature. Same way with being a child in God. Same way being a child in God. You're going to fall. You're going to get mad. You're going to get upset. You're going to get scared. You're going to get afraid. You're going to get afraid. You're going to get scared. Why else would Jesus define being saved? Now listen, why would our Lord define being saved as being born again? Why else would our Lord say that we have to come to him as a little child? Try Jesus now. 
Don't wait. Be born again in Jesus our God. Don't listen to anyone that says that you can't be saved. Don't listen to the voice of the devil that says you're not saved. Don't listen to that so-called person that says that they love you and tells you you're not ready to be saved. If they loved you, they would not say that. For we can be saved now. Right now, right now, they are wrong. They are wrong. Just as God called out Abraham and Abraham stepped out in faith, tonight we can step out in faith again in our own lives, even as a little child. Hallelujah. Even as a little child here tonight, and we can depart from the things of our past, the things that have crept back up, and we can start out a brand new life of promise in Jesus Christ. I'm stepping out in faith. How about you tonight? How about you? Are you encouraged tonight? Do you want to step out and do more for God? Hallelujah. 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 Are you happy you're born again? Are you happy tonight? Have you ever fell? Have you ever did things that wasn't pleasing to God? Did you ever cry? Have you ever gotten scared? You know, I'm sort of thinking that probably every one of us has. And that old holy one that says that they never have might be telling a, a story, a field, if that's a word. We all have. But we have a father. You can start singing, sissies. We have a father that's up in heaven that says now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to be saved. And he is a loving father. And it's his goodwill. It's his desire that we all make it to heaven and be with him. Hallelujah. Yeah, that person is going to make a mistake, Sister Shirley, Sister Wendy, Brother Richard, Brother Silas. They're going to make a mistake. They're going to fall down. But we, they have a Father in heaven that's, that is more than able to pick them up, dust them all off, fix the little bruise or the little scratch or the broke leg, the broke arm, the broke heart and set us right back on the road again. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I started out for the Lord and I'm going to finish this race that I have begun. How about you tonight? Hallelujah. Are you encouraged in the Lord? Hallelujah. I'm going to encourage my neighbor to find Jesus. Now. I'm going to encourage my family to find Jesus now. I'm going to encourage my children. Find Jesus now. Hallelujah. I'm going to encourage my grandbabies. Find Jesus now. For today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. With every head bowed and every eye closed.